Hello everyone, good day. Um, we'll be working, you know, on um, CSS um, selectors today. Um, this is in response to, you know, the feedback I got from uh, most of the students during our last um, um, class where we built the Google landing page. Okay, so I want to try to explain um, CSS selectors to uh, those who would like to understand how it works. All right, uh, to get this done, uh, we need to set up our project. So we have uh, our project um, file folder name, sorry, as CSS selectors, and we have two files inside it. We have the index.html, the style.css, okay? So we have them open, both are empty. We'll be generating the codes uh, we need for this session okay all right this is this is this is very very basic um it is for those who actually want to learn you know and understand what's going on you understand so if you um uh, during the course of you know following along you discover that this is what you already know you're free to move ahead you know seek other videos and you understand um continue from uh, where you stop okay so let's uh, get started all right i'll need to generate uh, my html for this page these are basic html syntax that every um, web page has to have okay so we by now we should know uh, what's happening here we have a doc type uh, declaring uh, html5 we have a html tag we have our head in your tag these are elements we have our body and the rest of them okay title will specify the title of our web page and this should be css selectors okay all right um what we'll do quickly we'll have to link this in this index page to our style of css okay so the browser has to know you know um how they are connected okay you do this by specifying uh an element called um a link okay now the link comes with uh or the link should have these attributes okay this specifies uh, the relationship what relationship um does this what we, what we specifying the file will be specifying here have with these are documents so we are saying that it's a star sheet the file you you are expecting you know is a style sheet all right so the browser knows to use styles from this um, uh, file that will specify which would be the style of css here it knows to use styles from there you know when rendering our, our web page or saving us our web page okay so we have um, relationship style sheet the type text slash css these are attributes okay by now we should know what attributes are so the common name and value pairs so name the attribute name equals the attribute value all right so we have type we are saying the type of this file we're expecting is what is text and it's um, a css file all right um the hypertext reference that is href h for hypertext arrow for reference that's the reference to this to the file to the file that contains our css rule so that's our css file we are saying is style.css okay now the reason why we are having just the simple name is because this file is located same place where our index.html file is so there's no need um being too absolute about uh, the path okay like going c colon slash slash and the rest of them you don't need that uh, provided the style is located on the same uh, folder where the index is okay you don't need to specify anything just the file name will do the browser knows to just go on that same directory and you know uh, get your file we could explain this further okay um, the full path to this css file you see in here if i come here and click on css you see it at the top this is the full path okay if you notice the last part of this address is like it's like saying 
planet Earth, Nigeria, Lagos State or Delta State, worry, coming to my streets, you know, coming to my compound and going to my house. You understand? So that's just that's just it. So now you don't need to specify this full path. Okay, just specify my house. We live in the same house. So if you see you since we are living in the same house, if you call my name there, yeah, I should be able to, you know, you don't need to now go and come, you know, like come out of my house and look for me somewhere else. You know I'm here. You search here first before you try to go elsewhere. So the browser knows to look for, you know, the file on the same folder. Okay. So you don't need an absolute path. This is called a relative path. All right, so we are specifying style dot CSS. Okay, so just like this, we have our we have our HTML page connected to our style dot CSS page. Okay, so if I come here, I could say body, and I say background color black, and you see our body with a black background color. I could say color white and you see that when I come here and type anything this is just a dummy text okay and I come and um, you see it has a white text on it all right so um, this shows that our uh, index page is able to interact with the CSS uh, page okay all right this is that all right let's come to our css file because this is what we are mainly concerned about and then um, i'd like to explain what's going on here now the basic syntax for css is this you have to select all you have your opening curly brace oops, and your closing curly brace okay so you have selector this and this all right then you come in inside the block we call this a block a code block okay you come inside the block and you specify a property the property you want to affect okay specify the property and you specify the value so we have property value pairs inside the code block that's just that's just it. this is this is how css looks anywhere in the world okay <laughs> except you start writing you know sas less and the rest of them but this is css for you all right so now in this case we are doing what is called a, an element selector that's what we you know specified here an element selector this we are selecting the body directly so every element that is a body element on our page will be affected by the style rule we specify within this block okay so we are saying body we can only have one body uh in a page or in a case where you have something like div you are targeting all divs you get me okay you see h1 you are targeting all h1 that means anywhere on your index that a html page that h1 appears uh these styles here should affect it all right so this is for element selectors so we have different type of selectors we have the element selectors we have the type the universal selectors i could say star star means select everything on the page so what i'm specifying here should affect everything on the page that is star okay that's a wild card in languages like a java and the rest so you are you are simply saying select everything on the page and apply the style the rules that will be specifying here you know to every element on the page okay so we have the class selectors they are preceded by a period then the class name so class name okay we have the id selector preceded by the pound sign and the id okay so you are seeing uh, an element that has the id should you know be affected by this rule okay you can't have more than one element on a page with the same id 
you get it's just like you know being in a class everybody has their personal identification number that's id or being in the high institution you have your math number no two students could have you know uh, one math number so if it happens that's an issue they'll have to rectify it okay so it's like that you know in your code okay so no two elements should have the same id but you could have um, um, multiple you know elements having sharing one class okay just like you have uh, many students in a class okay just as you have many students in a class so that's that's how it works all right so when you specify dots class you are actually affecting every element that belongs to the particular class you specify here okay when you say id you are sure to affect just one okay if you follow the rules all right so we have element we have id we have class then we have the you know universal and selector okay so let's um, let's try to get something done uh, we will be working with uh let's come back to our html let's do an h1 h1 login here um, please enter details below okay to login auto access your profile okay let's just assume that this is what we want to do okay i'll come here and um, create a form i don't know uh, don't worry about this what we are concerned about is our css all right that's what we're concerned about for this course okay so i'm not teaching you how to create a form that might teach you how to write h1 or p and the rest of them i'm mainly concerned about affecting the html with size okay so let's go on um, have my inputs the type or see text the name or call it a username okay i have another input type password name password okay um i have another input okay the type will be submit is that correct submit submit okay so we are done we're basically done with our form all right so if i come here we are not targeting anything yet i'll i'll leave this comment here so that it could guide us all right so i'll come down here we're not targeting anything here so let's come back and refresh you see we have we have what we specified here all right so what i want is i want this um whole stuff um to come to the middle and i want uh the input uh, elements to you know stack so i don't want it to be like a row i want it to be like a colon okay and um, the input element is inline by nature okay it has a display type of inline which means you know the flow along each other you know horizontally okay it's not like the div where um it's you know takes the whole width so the other div has to start from the bottom you know the div stacks but um your your inline elements the div is a block element so inline elements what, what they do is that they flow you know along each other on the page so what we'll do is i want these guys to stack and i want this everything in fact to come to the middle okay this is a simple a login form this um i don't like how this is it's too big that's um login here is too big i'll come and say h5 that's just too big mm. okay this is fair enough okay so let's come to our um, style of css and let's target uh h3 see come here i'm targeting that element and i want it to 
I want the color to be cyan. Uh, I hope to recognize. Ah, uh, yeah, but that's too sharp. Okay, so let me let me do something here now. Ash. Yeah, somebody asked about um, color mixing. Okay, so <laughs> to understand how that works, you have to um, wait for the design guy, the UI UX guy, to you know. I uh, get you to that stage and teach you that perfectly. Okay, so what I do is that I code what is given to me by my UI UX guy. They supply everything and you know I just beat it out. Okay, they give me my colors mixed, looking beautiful. So but what I can offer you is what I have, which is how you can you know mix. Uh, if you know what you are doing, you can you know mix your colors yourself. Okay, so what happens is that here. You yeah, start um, the color specification using the pound sign, which is hatch. We call it hatch. Okay, so this is hatch or pound zero 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 zero. Okay, the first two zeros here represent green. No, red. Sorry, the second two zeros represent uh, green. Yeah, I'm correct. And the last two zeros blue that's rgb so if you've seen rgb anywhere this is one way you can specify a color using the you know rgb pattern okay so what, what i'll be saying here is i want uh um red to be absent that's zero zero i want uh green to be absent that's zero zero and i want uh blue to be present like we make it full nine nine okay so let's come and see what we have here okay that's blue all right i could come here and say i want um green like one one okay you can use letters too but uh that's not what this uh course is about so that's how you can specify colors you could just play around it and get what you want there's another way you will come and say rgb you know get a bracket you know and then you specify 255 is full 255 is full 255 is full okay so you have arrow red 255 green 255 b 255 k so that will give us white all right so it's not visible so i'll come here and say um um i've never done this before zero zero two five five should give us exactly what we had the first time okay so i'll come here and see uh 100 you know just trying to mix it up and you know have it another shade of blue we get now so this is like color mixing okay so let's let's uh we can stay too much on this mountain so let's move forward all right so we have our property we are saying we want to affect every hitch three elements want to affect their color okay the color has the property of this element and you, you know elements they have their properties okay so you cannot apply some properties to some elements it will not work because uh, that property does not exist within that element so for example you cannot uh, what can't you do to me if you can't target my wings for example i don't have wings so if you try to target beautify my wings you it won't work because there's no wings to beautify so we have elements like that that you cannot just you know you can't you can't you can't you know affect some properties so the property that works on these elements might not work on this but for i think um the color element works for almost all but you can't you can't target the color of an image okay so that's that's one that's one property okay so colors are basically for text okay so we are targeting h3 elements the color property of it and we are giving it a value of this so that's simply what we're doing here okay so we've seen the result and let's come here and see um our paragraphs uh should i make it red no i i want to use red for something else okay so let's leave it black okay i'll come and target my form um i want to wrap my form i want to wrap my form within 
I'll derive my form within a D. There's a reason for this K. Wrap it within a div. Properly indent my code. And here we are. I'll call this class form. Alright. So I can target this now. I could say dot form. This is the class selector. Dot form. And I will say display flex. Okay, I will, I, I will, I will, you know, um, do a, a, a video on the, um, um, responsive design. So we'll talk about flex, we'll talk about some other stuff, um, talk about the grid, how it works, and then um, blah, blah, blah. But for now, just, just, just look at the code. Eh? <laughs> if you are getting confused, pretend as if you are not seeing it. Okay, I'm saying if you are getting confused because I believe I'm talking to you know beginners and those who really want to understand what's going on so if you it seems like you're getting confused just go online do research on what uh, display flex does and you know come back and continue okay so display flex all right it makes the container which is the form container to be flexible so as you see flex okay so i could place its contents in it that I could place this guy now, this element, anywhere I want it to be within this form container. So it's now flexible. I can, you know, throw it anywhere, center, left or right, and just like that, I could play it, play with it. Okay. So I have a display uh, flex, flex direction. Should I use flex direction? No. Align items. So I align items within this dot form element should align the items in the center okay and you should um, justify the content center you know one one does horizontal alignment and the other does vertical alignment okay so uh we are here i would see also that um uh what again uh what again i see the height minimum height should be um 90 vh this is that's the minimum height of this container that has the class of form should be 90 view height okay just like saying uh 90 percent of the view height okay which is this view you see now all right 90% of the height of the screen. Okay, so uh, we are here. Let's see. Let's see what we've done so far. What have we done? Okay, it's here. All right. I want to include uh, uh, this stuff inside this div so that everything comes to the middle. Okay, let's hang down. Stay with me. Okay, so if we come here now and uh, we see that everything is here. Okay. So what I would do is um, I'll simply come back here, flex, and I'll say direction, okay, flex direction, column, all right, so everything forms a straight line, okay, so input elements are in line by nature, we've talked about that, okay, I want to change that, I'll come here and say inputs, mm -hmm. Uh, display should be blocked so it's now functions like a D how a D would be all right so we have what we have here okay uh, having done that I don't like the space between this and this it's too much okay I'll come here and say is that, is that supposed to be padding we've talked about inspecting before so I use my inspector inspect i come to the box model i have margin of 18 wow i'm going to change that now margin should be just what you have here just top and bottom okay margin top should be 10 px the side should be zero the bottom should be 10px0, okay? Uh, this is saying margin 
top, you specify this is shorthand instead of doing something like it's margin top, margin bottom, margin left, margin right, margin top. This is just a shorthand. So you start assigning from the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. Okay, so this is what we are doing. I'm saying the top should be 10 px 0. 10 px 0 there's no need of adding the, the px here okay it knows okay so it just zero is enough all right so this is what we have i'll save and come here and then um, we should have something good okay what's happening as soon as we close that inspect it actually worked okay so i will reduce it more I come five it's too far you know what I'll make it zero I'll take advantage of the space in the paragraph has just for this course okay just for this course so I think it's looking better now I you can work with this. <laughs> this is this is not meant to be perfect, sorry. All right, so let's target our input. We are saying the display should be block. I want the height to be uh, uh, something around 25px. Let's see how it looks. All right, coming together. Uh, will this work? Okay, let's see. 100px. That's so small for this. This is wow. Uh, I still go three fifty. Now, this is. Just trying to teach you a concept here. I'll come here now and see. Uh, the margin bottom should be should be ten px. Have we ever talked about padding and margin before? Uh, I'm not sure we've done that. Padding and margin. I'm not sure we've done that. Okay, so let's um let's quickly look at that. Okay, I'll right click here and say inspect. We have a box model here. This is the margin is simply the space around the container. Okay, that's the margin space around the container. The padding is the space inside. The container, but now it's between the border of the container and where the content starts from. Okay, so uh, it's like it's like this. It's like this. Okay, how do I explain it now? All right, the space from here to here is a margin. All right, if there happens to be a space here. This space becomes my, my padding. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. So these are my left margin. You get, you get the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let's let's do it like this now. Let's do it like this now. This should be fine. So the space around this div, this class div, that's the space on this line. And this line is a margin. So outside to this div, to this div element. This space is a margin. Why this space inside it that's you know separating it from its content is the padding, okay? But to the body element, this space is a padding. Okay, if I want to apply this space or I want to generate this space using the body, this space will be generated using what is called padding. But if it is using the div. This will become a margin all right okay so yeah just that's how it works all right uh, let's get rid of the spaces and uh, we are here so let's come back here 
this is a box model all right the 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 this is the border as you can see the border separates the padding from the margin so this is the margin space around the content padding you know this space around the container that's margin padding is the space between the content and the border okay so the border is between the margin and the padding all right so that's what i've been you know making use of so i'll try to repeat that uh as i you know keep making use of it until you know you you understand what's going on all right so we have this here this is achieved using you know stash it as simple as this so i get rid of this now so done so we've succeeded in making use of the element selector the type selector the class and um you know this this is still the element selector all right so let's make use of uh, the id the id i'll say id no pound button and i'll say background color green so you can specify some colors okay that uh, the computer can understand let's say id i call this a button okay um this should work it should work all right i have it there so i'll come here and specify the color you know the difference between background color and color okay color affects the text background color affects the background i'll see um white okay all right this is fair enough i'll see border border should be zero i'll see um you can see zero or none if i'm if i'm still you know correct um from here see padding padding should be uh top 10 px side zero bottom 10 px you know left zero okay uh are we on track how does padding work okay padding starts from the left okay this is left hmm? top all right uh left top no, correct right bottom yeah okay great okay let's increase it let's increase it this 15 this 15 okay okay the height is already fixed okay so what i'll do is i'll, ch I'll change this to i'll change this to um class input fields what's happening is that um, um, i've already enforced the height for my input so my uh, button uh, is obeying that rule and it doesn't want to expand you know beyond that so my padding is being swallowed up okay um i think i'll explain that uh, another time when we do um responsive design i'll talk about it a lot like uh, maybe i might have to um you know cut that into bits okay because we'll, we'll talk about a lot a whole lot okay uh so i'm removing this or i won't i'll come here and say dot form was that input fields sorry input fields all right uh, this is it okay so I'll come here and see the width of my body I'll carry here and give you this now all right I want a padding. Uh, 
is actually happening. Did I do this wrong? 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I did the wrong way. Okay. So coming back. 10. This happens all the time. Okay. So it's not going to be scared of. Okay. I'm kind of concerned why this is not properly aligned, but I don't want to waste my time on that <laughs> at this time. Okay, so what we have now is what we have here. Oh, sorry. So we have, um, we are pretending to have a form. Okay, so um, I think I would have to end this video here. This is pretty basic. This is very, very basic for most of you, but... Um, I just can't help but, you know, target those who require much explanation, you know, to get a concept. They should not be left behind. In fact, they end up being the best programmers. <laughs> so when, when they start, they seem slow, but uh, they end up being the best programmers because uh, they have a good understanding of uh, the concept. Okay, so those are my audience primary audience all right i think this video is already too long uh, you know for what we covered so i will end here and then um, we'll release more videos now i would like to get your feedback um you know i want you to follow along you are the reason i do this video so um it will, it will make sense if i get feedback from you so if you understand the concept, if you don't understand, you know, feel free to reach out and uh, I'll do it to explain to the best of my knowledge. Um, then I can refer you to sites where you can, you know, um, get help and understand what's happening. Okay. So thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, uh, do subscribe to this channel and then. Uh, See you next time. By the way, I think this, this should be somewhat responsive. <laughs> All right. Let me refresh and uh, I think uh, I have some work to do. Okay, I'm still online. <laughs> All right. Uh, bye. See you next time.